Hello, and welcome to Writer's Group Therapy. I'm Tom. And I'm Roshni. We're writers helping writers with whatever writing ailments you might have. Whether it's related to your craft or your career, we can help. Are you ready for your session? The The doctors doctors are are in. in. of an era. Tom is leaving Los Angeles, you guys. And Roshni's finally accepting it. Well, I don't know if I'm accepting it. I'm saying it out loud and trying it out and seeing how I feel about it. And I still don't like it. But you know, what can I do? (laughs) Yeah, sorry. I feel feel like I should apologize to you. (laughs) I haven't moved past the first stage of grief for like two months. So... So just a just a recap. So for various uh, personal and professional and pandemic reasons, I decided to head back to Cleveland, Ohio, where I'm from. And uh, as we're recording this, I'm sitting in a half empty apartment as I get rid of my stuff and ship things off. And uh, we thought we'd talk about, you know, what's going to be like. I'm oh still going to be doing the podcast. I'm not leaving the podcast. No, you better not leave the podcast. I won't let you. <laughs> I will fly out to Ohio and be like, you're doing the podcast. We're recording right now. <laughs> well, we have a lot of listeners who aren't in Ohio or aren't, aren't in Ohio, aren't in, in California, aren't in Los Angeles. Yeah. So, you know, they often, you know, maybe they feel like we're, we're very Hollywood centric, but, you know, now they'll be able to get a little bit perspective of the post LA writer life. Um, how it how it's different from being in LA. I I know how it was before I came to LA, and I know how it was in LA. Well, let's start at the beginning. So first of all, how long have you been out in Los Angeles? Uh, nine years. Nine years. Oh my gosh! Yeah, we actually met at a Christmas party nine years ago. Yes. Crazy. Mm-hmm. A and networking so, a networking Christmas party. A networking Christmas party. Yeah. So when you came out here. Well, you already had your feet wet a little. I know you had uh, written some pilots and you had some connections out here. So what did you come out here hoping to accomplish? Well, yeah, I came out a whole month uh, for a whole month before I actually moved here to check it out. And I discovered the networking possibilities were so great here. You know, the, the first weekend I was here just visiting, I met, you know, a half a dozen people at an event and it just kind of snowballed from there. And then I, I joined the table, which is a networking group. And I just I realized really quickly that I had to come to L.A. if I wanted to actually get connected into the industry. And so obviously now, nine years later, like how have your expectations been met or not met or exceeded? What would this is going to be a like multi-tiered question. We'll start with that. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, it it was fantastic. You know, the the networking was great. You know, I, I got I got going to all these different webinars or not webinars, seminars and I went to a lot of Writers Guild, um, you know, events. I started going to workshops um, and uh, met other people. And start, we started a writers group, obviously, and our podcast. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was really great, actually. You know, um, I did a bunch of different mentorship programs. The access to, you know, actual, like, uh, industry events. Um, com- the Comic-Con scene, you know, is much bigger out here. That kind of stuff. You know, that was all just amazing. You know, obviously, the last year and a half is kind of also one of the reasons I'm leaving is because I feel like most of that's gone virtual. I think we'll get into that more later. But yeah, but, you know, the really, you know, and we talked about, you know, do you have to be in L.A. in one of our episodes earlier? And it really, you know, it seemed like, yeah, this is the place to be. If you really want to get into the business, you really want to meet people and you really want to understand how it works. This is this was it. And it was it was you know, it met and exceeded my expectations. That was great. And you came out right after the writer strike had happened. And that really had changed the face of Hollywood. So you kind of, I mean, luckily you didn't come out during the writer's strike, but you kind of came out when things were like getting reef, not refreshed, but like kind of changing the face of it was changing. Honestly, I was kind of ignorant of the whole thing. I mean, I, I had heard about it going on, but I hadn't exactly understood it completely so my moving and what timing had nothing to do with the writer strike it was just coincidental mm, okay okay i mean and now so, i'm much more aware of what that all what means it meant stuff. Yeah. yeah yeah so what would you have done differently before coming out here and during your time in los angeles good question i would have done much differently i think uh i would have been a little more um cautious um i had some some sharks you know, kind of circling me early on. I had some bad experiences with some 
quote unquote producers who, you know, promised me things and led me on and, you know, cost me some money and that kind of stuff. So I would have been more cautious. And I think that would be a really great thing for new people coming to LA would be a nice, like how to avoid the sharks, you know, kind of seminar. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, I remember because I've basically known you since you moved here. And I remember I felt like you wasted years of your life on those people. Well, I, I wouldn't call it a waste. It was certainly an educational experience. And, um, you know, at least, you know, one of the people that I was involved with, um, she's been really positive and helpful and supportive of me, even though she was kind of involved in some of that mess. Um, so I don't see it as a total negative. You know, some mm-hmm. of it was positive. But, you know, it was a little bit of learning the hard way. Um, fortunately, I didn't lose any, you know, material. I didn't lose any IP out of it. I didn't lose my oh, script or good. my project. Yeah. I was sued. I was threatened to be sued for half a million dollars. Though. Oh, you didn't tell me this story. Are you allowed to talk about it? Well, I don't want to get into the okay, details. Um, but, uh, yeah, I had a bogus option agreement that, you know, every lawyer I showed it to said it couldn't, I could wipe my butt with it. It was so, it, it was like an Ill- illegal option basically I was given. Oh my gosh. And that guy wanted to sue me for half a million dollars for breaking the option. And yeah, it was a big mess. So. Oh my word. I feel like, or I feel like if you did tell me, I didn't understand all the details. Cause I, I vaguely, it vaguely sounds familiar, but I'm like, really? And it was, it was a bogus threat because it was a bogus option and everything else was bogus about it. So just watch out, people. If you're coming to LA, just you know, make sure you get a lawyer for one, and uh, an entertainment lawyer, and uh, and you listen to their advice. <laughs> yeah, I feel like especially for writers, um, not that a lawyer is not important for anybody in the industry, but I feel like for writers especially, especially because if you don't come out here with an agent, you know, yeah, then you need somebody. You need somebody on your team right away. Yeah, there are some meetup groups that um, either are run by lawyers. I know a couple. Um, uh, but they, I, I'll have to find a link and put it in the notes. But um, you know, they're free. You can just go and ask questions, and and it's they're great. So you know, you don't have to like you know actually retain a lawyer to get that information because there are people in the industry that are willing to do this kind of like little you know coffee talks kind of stuff, and and give you the basics. So mm-hmm. so I would definitely take advantage of those if you can find them. So I know in your time out here. You didn't really apply for like any of the fellowships or anything like that. Did you? I did, did you, early. Oh, okay. I did. I did the first several years. I did. Um, I, I applied to like Warner Brothers a couple times. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I did do a bunch of them. And uh, and I did some screenwriting contests. Didn't I, I, I think I made like the quarterfinals of one contest, but that was as far as I got with any of the contests. Mm-hmm. Um, I did have the emerging uh, writers uh, contest, the PlayStation Oh, that's um, right. That was my big, that was probably one of my, the highs of my uh, time here was I was the top 10 finalist in the PlayStation uh, uh, filmmaker competition. Yeah, that's right. You know, I made some really good friends. Uh, the other finalists all came out to LA if they weren't already here. And we, uh, they put us up at the Roosevelt Hotel and we got to pitch the, the, the Sony, the PlayStation people. Um, they were looking for possible TV pilots to do their own content. None of them, I don't think any of them got, they made pilots of the fi- of the top five, but I don't think any of them actually got like picked up or anything. I was going to say, I didn't think the channel itself actually took off. Yeah, no, they, they, um, they didn't, they didn't really happen. I think they were trying it out yeah. and, and they, I think they just, I, maybe it was just competition. I mean, everybody was coming out with a streamer at the time. Yeah. And Sony is the one studio that really doesn't have a specific streaming partnership so much. Oh my gosh, you're right. Yeah. Oh wow! I just thought about. It. I'm like, whoa! Mind blown. Yeah. yeah, isn't it weird? Yeah. Huh. I mean, they have their game platform. It's kind of you know huge. The Sony, the PlayStation stuff, but uh, on the film side, they're kind of all over the place. You know, they have deals with Marvel where they're doing like Spider-Man stuff with Marvel, and mm-hmm. and then they have their other properties. And you know, they license out their material to any streamer that wants it, pretty much. I guess. I was gonna say. I mean, Sony is a brand, though, as an entertainment brand. You don't think of a certain thing. Like when you say Disney, you have a certain idea in your head of what you're going to get. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But when you say Sony, I'm just like, hmm. And I'm trying to think. I know they have their hands in a lot of things, but I'm like, yeah. what is their like, overall one brand? And you can't really distill yeah. it that I can think of anyway. Bringing it back to the topic. Yeah, I Sony, know, right? <laughs> Sony Studios was the first place I went for an event here, actually. I went to a, I can't even remember who had the event, but there was a, oh, it was the Producers Guild. It was the, um, the Producers Guild was having their annual, um, you know, 
conference or whatever at Sony Studios the weekend I came out to visit LA for a month. And that's where I met uh, Brian McClure, who you know, and um, and started networking from there. So yeah, so that's my oh, other wow. connection to Sony is that I got to walk around on the Sony, uh, the Sony um, lot like mm-hmm. my first weekend in town. And that was really cool. And I know you did a couple shorts because we produced a couple short films together. Did you ever want to do your own feature? Do you kind of regret not producing your own feature while you were out here? I don't regret it. I just, um, I didn't, I mean, I, I, I tried pitching, you know, features as a writer trying to sell scripts and such, but not producing my own feature. I think one of the things about going back to Cleveland that's cool is there is a, has been a growing film community this whole time in Cleveland. They have a great tax incentive in Ohio. So the number of productions in, in Ohio and in Cleveland has grown year after year after year. The, you know, the number of um, uh, local, you know, people in the industry, skilled, talented, true people has grown. So there's a, a bigger base I'm going back to that I can get involved with either as a producer to work on projects or to pull from if I want to actually produce, like I have a, um, a, a low budget paranormal thriller I want to, I want to actually produce. And I can probably do it there and do it a lot cheaper there than I could here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a perfect segue then to say, so what are you looking forward to besides the tax incentive and the, you know, increase? <laughs> but I mean, like, what else would you uh, be looking forward to going back to Ohio? Well, I'm interested to see where the community is at when I get there. I'm going to be connecting with the Cleveland Film Commission. I was I was involved with them before I came out here. So I want to see what they're up to now and if I can be of any help, mm-hmm. uh, get involved with that and uh, any productions they have in coming to town. Uh, when I was back visiting uh, in, in the last year, I went to a Literary Cleveland as an organization that I, I went to a, uh, an event they had while I was in town. And uh, there are all kinds of writing, prose, poetry, comic books even, um, and screenwriting. So I would like to get involved with them and, and maybe uh, maybe see if there's a, a, enough people who want to do a screenwriting group there uh, on a regular basis. Oh, there's that's that. cool. And then there was a, uh, there's a Cleveland Indie Club. Um, which is a filmmaking group that I used to go participate in events and monthly meetings with that I'll probably get involved with again. So those are kind of the highlights of what I'm looking forward to doing when I get back. Then just on top of just getting settled back in there, just kind of decompressing. And without the pressure and the day-to-day of LA, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of got ideas and stories that I want to um, possibly actually get back to writing which would be great doing more writing. I know that's been something that you've been complaining about in the last year or so where you're like, I'm so busy trying to like keep myself afloat in Los Angeles that I don't have time to do what I came out here to do, which is just right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, There's so much surviving you have to do in LA versus, versus writing. And when you're, I mean, when you're not in in LA, you, you might have another day job and you know, there's, in the evenings, you, you have your life. <laughs> here, in, here in LA, it's kind of nonstop. You like never stop you know, schmoozing and going to events and that kind of stuff. So it's almost like you're always selling versus being creative. Yeah. I think the pandemic helped a little bit. Like We're not working as much on the weekends and stuff, but you can kind of feel it ramping back up. So I think give it a year and we're going to get back to pre-pandemic levels of output where it's like, like you're saying, the constant networking. You know, people calling you at nine at night and being like, where's that script or you're on set tomorrow or whatever. And you're like, ah, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas you're actually going to be able to have a work life balance, I think, going back to the Midwest. Yeah, it, it'll it'll probably be a little more mellow. Um, but I feel like the pandemic, you know, as much as it brought things to kind of a crawl in many ways, it enhanced the virtual abilities of writers. Mm-hmm. You know, there was you know, virtual pitch fest before the pandemic, there was online, you know, webinars and stuff, but it's just exploded into even more. And it's become more, I want to say acceptable, you know, before it was kind of like you had to be in LA because people wanted FaceTime with you, like not, not the app. They wanted to <laughs> the real FaceTime, yeah. do coffee. They wanted to meet you. And now it feels like, um, especially with the, the vast increase in content creation, um, with all the streamers and everything, I feel like it's just moving so fast that they kind of had to go virtual and it's kind of working. So I feel like that's going to still be an option. Um, and we've, we've interviewed people who kind of came through that round through contests and online pitching, and then they wind up back in LA. 
a lot of them, you know, several of them have actually started elsewhere and then migrated here as opposed to coming here and then getting their break, so to speak. Yeah, LA is kind of funny because it's like that you can either come out here and you already have the seeds planted and then all you're doing is just nurturing like whatever it was you'd started or you come out here and it's a lot harder and you're like, OK, I have no connections. I have nothing. Let's try it. That was me. When I came out here, I really had no connections. I didn't know what I was doing. And I feel like that really set me back years as far as now I'm finally at a point where I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm working consistently and stuff like that. But that took me years to get to that point. So in a way, like if you ever did come back, you already have those, you know, connections and stuff in place. It'll be easier for you to come back. Right. And yeah, I understand the the lay of the land, so to speak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And before I came out here, I had I made several trips to L.A. I came out for AFM, the American Film Market one year or mm. one actually the year before. And uh, I came out for another event. I can't remember what the other one was. And then and then I came out for that whole month where I kind of I w- went around. I met with lawyers. So I had a lawyer at that point. You know, those kinds of things that kind of laid the groundwork for. So I did have a, a little bit of a head start before I landed here. It was still kind of chaotic when I first got here. but. But I had that really weird, just a funny story. I, I showed up in L.A. It was October. Like I landed and I drove into L.A. like beginning of October. And by mid-October, I had a job like at the post-production sound company. I worked oh, wow. for a year and a half. Yeah, I mean, I actually and, and, and it was funny because the apartment I got was like literally a five minute walk to where I wound up getting a job. So like I landed in L.A. pretty well. I, I yeah. hit the ground running. I had a full time job at a good comp- a, a established Hollywood studio. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and so I started off pretty good. I can't complain. I was going to say that's unheard of. Most people take like months to find their footing and find a job and everything. Well, I had many years in marketing experience, so I was kind of, and that's what my first job was, was in mm. marketing. And it was okay. for a hot entertainment industry, you know, company, but it was in my skill set that I brought with me to LA, but it allowed me to make connections, understand the business more. Um, and, you know, and have, you know, some security to be able to, you know, go out on the evenings and weekends and do that networking stuff. Yeah. You know, some people come to LA and they think they're just going to get a job at a restaurant or something like that. But if you have skills that you're bringing with you from, you know, other parts of your life or your career, you know, use them here, you know, they're definitely going to be an advantage. Although right now everybody is hiring. So you could come out here and get any job. It's fine. Yeah. You want that restaurant job? It's yours. It's open. There's plenty of those. Plenty of those right now. So, like, where do you, like, we'll just kind of, you know, future project. Where do you think you'll be a year from now? Do you think you're still going to be in Ohio? Do you think you're going to want to come back to L.A.? Yeah, I mean, my reasons for going to Ohio are not, like, temporary necessarily. I mean, I'll come back to L.A. um, (laughs) in winter, maybe, just because I can't stand winter anymore. Um, uh. You know, the you know for the business, I'll I'll come to L.A. You know for meetings. Uh, you know, I'll I spend a month in L.A. just so I can come and visit and connect and mm-hmm. and you know whatever events are going on. Um, that's a business trip. Then you know that that's totally doable. Um, as far as moving back to L.A., that would you know obviously I'd have to have some sort of industry type of you know job lined up, some writing or producing kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, this, there's a lot of family reasons I'm moving back to Cleveland, so that's going to keep me there for the long, you know, for a, a while, definitely for a while. And uh, and then, like I said, if I can manage to produce this uh, independent, uh, you know, paranormal thriller in Cleveland, you know, that could open up a lot of avenues. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let me know if you need an actor. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Well. <laughs> And then, of course, you know, I have my game, my word cursion game. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, working, continuing to work on that, um, possibly breaking out into a, a franchise of a couple of different games within the, the word cursion universe. So that's going to be taking a lot of my time. And if that takes off, that's going to hopefully generate revenue that can then fund a lot of my other projects. So, yeah, you got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Going on. Lot, yeah. A lot of stuff going on. And uh, I mean, I'm going to, you know, of course, there's things I'm going to miss the weather, uh, my friends. Yeah. Being able to get any kind of food you want at any time of night, pretty much. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Everything not closing at 930. That's that stuff I'm going to miss, you know, the, the, the life, the, the people, um, the diversity, uh, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. So 
I mean, we'll keep track of your adventures as you're in a different region. I mean, it will be very interesting to see how things go as a regional writer and a regional filmmaker, you know, because it's something that we both haven't really explored since we've been out here. Yeah, I've already reconnected with a few of my uh, uh, filmmaking friends back in Cleveland and they've got, hey, I'm, they're working on projects or, hey, do you want to come help me with this project? So I think I'm going to be hitting the ground running back in Cleveland pretty well, too. That's awesome. Oh, Tom, L.A. is losing such an amazing person. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and so humble and modest. <laughs> yes. Call me managers and, lo- and, and, and agents. You can call me. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and but we'll keep the podcast going and hopefully uh, it'll give us a little more perspective outside of uh, L.A. And. And uh, who knows who I'll find in Cleveland that we can interview. Yeah, I know, I know our buddy Dan O'Shannon is out there still. He moved back to Cleveland. Oh, my gosh, it'd be great to have him on the show again. Yeah, I'm going to have to have to meet up with Dan while I'm there. Because he's is he technically retired out of the industry or semi-retired i, I don't know i'm you know i don't think you ever retire as a writer you're you know the unless the 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 brain juices stop flowing totally mm-hmm. you never completely you know get out so i think there's something to be said though for even just a change of scenery like i've been thinking oh my gosh i need to like take a weekend and just do a writer's retreat you know and just mm-hmm. get out of the house and like go somewhere else to write yeah like i can't remember the last time i left the city I mean, yeah. besides flying out to go visit family and stuff, just like I, it's been years. People, people need breaks, and this yeah. is my taking a kind of a distant break. But I'm just from just from the city. I, I don't know how I'm going to survive not waking up to airplanes flying over my apartment every morning. I know we just heard one. <laughs> yeah, that that metallic sound you heard. Yeah, it was. I mean, oh, the flight okay. path of Burbank Airport. That's yeah. Mm. that and the constant uh whine of sirens too yeah 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 yeah, oh, good those, night's sleep. The, yeah. I'll, I'll just listen to squirrels running on the roof oh anyway uh thanks la it's been fun yeah tom we will miss you and if you guys have any questions for tom while he's in ohio and you have questions about regional markets tweet it at us let us know check us out on writersgrouptherapy.com at wg therapy online on instagram and twitter and tom Best of luck to you out there. Thank you.